Welcome to the Scrum.org Community Podcast, a podcast from the home of Scrum. In this podcast, we feature professional Scrum trainers and other Scrum practitioners sharing their stories and experiences to help learn from the experience of others. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Ripley with Agile for Humans and professional Scrum trainer with Scrum.org. I'm stepping in as a guest host for episodes highlighting the experiences of other Scrum.org professional scrum trainers. I hope you enjoy getting to know these amazing people. All right, welcome to another episode of Becoming a Scrum Master. I'm your host, Ryan Ripley. Joining me today is Pavel, uh, fellow PST from across the pond. But before that was a scrum master, I'm assuming. So yeah, Mm -hmm. definitely not assuming. All PSTs are versed in scrum master activities, product ownership. So Definitely a scrum master. And so we're going to jump right into it. So can you share the story of how you first encountered scrum? What motivated you to become a scrum master? Was there a particular moment, experience? What really sparked this, probably what's likely going to be a lifelong journey of mm-hmm. scrum and scrum mastery? So what did that look like? I think my journey wasn't it wasn't very popular. I think not many people would would connect to that. But these days, over 15 years ago in Eastern Europe, uh, where I come from, I believe, I never checked, we had uh, zero Scrum Masters in our country. And it was simply, and, and I used to be a programmer and a project manager in German heavy metal waterfall traditional project management <laughs> kind of company. And sure. It was accident, incident, and the happy circumstances. That company got merged with another one. And it was very agile. And uh, there was a bigger project, big, bigger initiative to transform our German part to be more agile. Uh, we had nobody to hire simply as scrum masters. First of all, I think the company wouldn't afford to, to hire so many people. Our corporation was many thousands of, uh, of people only in my country. And it was um, a global corporation. There were not a lot or literally zero hard to say right now scrum masters available job market so we needed to learn it from scratch what inspired me to become a scrum master it's a good question because typically i answer coincidence i was there somebody had to pick it up but from the perspective of time i think it's simply at that moment uh, in my career but also that moment of the organization it simply it made sense it was something that I intuitively think, I thought that, yeah, that makes sense. And it would be useful, helpful for our team, for our department. Very cool. So it seems like right place, right time. And mm-hmm. uh, someone gave you the opportunity to jump in. That seems to be a thread, right? De- de- def- definitely. Uh, we, we had support globally as a company, support of um, very famous uh, people who visited us. I remember Clay Rahman, for instance, and a few other very well recognized names, but it was a global company and Craig visited us maybe for two days a year. Sure. All the rest we needed to discover on our own. And believe me, we did read books. These days books were I think they were longer than what you would buy nowadays, uh, what is <laughs> sure. written at the moment. I think there was longer. So uh, classical kind of books, but reading a book without any practical context didn't make a lot of sense. So I think it was adaptive discovery what we did. Cool. And so was there a specific project or situation where you had the eureka or light bulb moment, something that just made you appreciate or see the true power and potential of Scrum? And if so, could you describe that? Mm. (laughs) I recall one situation, which is perhaps not what you're asking uh, directly for, but that was a situation where for the first time I was asked as a steel project manager, now wanna be agile project manager, technically Scrum master these days, I was asked by head of our project managers, a very senior uh, traditional project manager, to tell him what Scrum is. And I did my best, it was a one hour long speech or conversation. He said, it's interesting. And I, he said, that's really nice, but could you tell me, uh, where do you have the sprint plan? Sprint plan, I asked, what? The plan for sprints, like 
what you will do in each of the sprints from now to the end of the year. And I thought, no, darn, that's completely wasted one hour. But it was a very eye-opening moment. But the fact that I understand something and it makes sense doesn't mean that it will be very easy to implement with others because of their habits, because of their um, perspective and know-how. Um, that's uh, when I thought role, as we used to say these days, of a scrum master, that sounded very easy, right? <laughs> a few things to do, to lead a few meetings, and that's it. It's actually way deeper, uh, way more difficult, and that's how my professional journey with Scrum Mastery uh, started. Uh, I, I think that's great. And so as you've progressed through this journey of Scrum Master, how is your perception and execution of the Scrum Master role or accountabilities, as we say now, how is that mm -hmm. kind of how has that evolved? And are there aspects of the Scrum Master role or accountabilities that you view differently now compared to when you first started? Oh, definitely. There was there was a lot of there's a lot of mistakes of beginners. I was proud of during first year or so of my and my journey as a Scrum Master that all other Scrum Masters, whenever they run retrospectives, it takes them one hour or even 90 minutes, why was done in 15? <laughs> any, any, any pros? Thank you, one more. I need one per person, put it into Excel file online. Any cons, any minuses or deltas? Fine, any actions? Come here, thank you, bye. Awesome retrospective, very efficient, absolutely rubbish. I, I, I know it from distance. So there's a lot of cargo called at the, at the moment. But what we created somehow, I mean, Scrum Masters in, in our department, even not the, the company, is what you would name nowadays community of practice or a chapter of Scrum Masters we learned from each other. And we did a lot of great stuff, uh, including, for instance, impediments workshop. Very good, I think, very useful practice, but now this is somehow, somehow forgotten. So we had a lot of checkpoints to validate with our peers whether what we do makes sense. And it, if, it, if it didn't make sense, we were empowered to, to change it a bit. Our organization supported us in that way. So after having a lot of, making a lot of mistakes initially, I think we learned from each other and definitely grew up. What was, again, a happy coincidence, nothing that we really planned was that quite early in my journey, we reached out to professional teachers of professional coaching, professional training, or professional facilitation, because definitely these skills were what we miss, were missing. I was a project manager, but just a few years earlier, programmers, absolutely no skills in terms of facilitation, coaching, and training, and we were allowed to experiment a lot. Uh, I was running various different training sessions on topics that not necessarily I was expert these days, but at least I was allowed to do it for my peers, collect feedback and learn how to teach if we are talking about that stance um, only. Uh, definitely evolve step by step. I think the final moment was my discussion many years later with Ginter Ferhey, and I think it was my PSM before I became a professional scrum trainer these days, so years ago already, I asked him, Ginter, could you please tell me what is your favorite uh, technique for running retrospectives? And he started at me, I don't know any techniques. And I thought, all right, so what do you do? We just sit down and talk. <laughs> and uh, when I took, uh, I, I never thought about it. And um, uh, it, it was very powerful and actually difficult technique of having a powerful coaching conversation with people, where all these standard stages of retrospective that we know from from books, they exist. They are there, but actually, it's all under your control from the perspective of process control as as a coach. It requires a lot of skills. And now this is my way of running retrospectives, frankly speaking. If I have to do it from time to time, let's sit down and talk. It requires a lot of awareness, also self-awareness, not only situational awareness. But on the other side, you don't have to hide behind a technique that is, that is safe somehow because what to prepare, how to run it, what is step one, step two, step three is great, but there's more. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, of course, Gunther always has those prophetic comments that he makes that just make you think for a month. There was a LinkedIn article posted recently of, I think Ryan Lada put it out there that the three column retrospectives are destroying your teams. And I think he's right. And then you mm -hmm. see every day where you've got the new Harry Potter retrospective or the new Star Wars retrospective. or And I think someone, one of the influencers out there posted one based on Tinder. It's just, it's getting ridiculous. 
when I think That's Gunther's so absolutely right, sit down and have a conversation and a mm -hmm. powerful, I, I love that. That's such a great, and that's a, I think that's a really good evolution of the maturity of a scrum match. Like that's first it's what went well, what didn't, what could be changed. And then it's, oh, I put Harry Potter or Star Wars on top of the three column. And then I matured into, let's just have a good coaching conversation. And we mm -hmm. don't have to have the formats and the nonsense. And I like that a lot. I, I really appreciate that. And, and, and of course, always appreciate advice, whether directly or indirectly from Gunther. It's hard to go wrong talking to him. Mm -hmm. I think that in general, one of the key success factors for Scrum Masters and Agile professionals in general is to have a mentor, yeah, one or many, or at least what I name on the job training. You can read many books, can have many training sessions, but it's actually real life, real situation. Uh, I know a few Scrum Masters that approach me and ask, what should be my next steps? And my advice quite often is, if you used to be a scrum master for the last five years in big corporations, try small software house right now. Or other way, if you were in that industry, try the other one. Find your place, but also taste different flavors because that would be your toolkit, but also confidence. And in the future, you'll be way more effective no matter where you will find out yourself. Great. So you've done this, but maybe you've got another thought here. What advice would you give to some someone who's aspiring to be a scrum master? So they haven't started yet, but they want to. Is there a particular mindset, skill, or habit that you believe is crucial for success in this role or to fulfill the accountabilities? Mm -hmm. I always find this uh, question very difficult if you ask me about the scrum master, very easy if you ask me about the product owner. My piece of advice would be, First of all, find a mentor or a company where Scrum is really good because uh, you will learn from others. Reach out to local communities. Uh, I am so thrilled when I observe uh, Agile Coach Camp community in my enter country yeah. in Poland. They meet a few times uh, a year. We didn't have it 15 years ago. Uh, we didn't have a, a community, a place where we could reach out to peers and discuss different topics. For instance, <laughs> the next technique of running retrospectives. So reaching out to people who know and they know how to do it right, um, that would be essential one. The, secondly, a sort of humility, um, but perhaps I'm going to use different words. Be aware, situational awareness, that would be my theme. Good Scrum Master enters rooms and sees more than the rest. Also, perhaps tricky, learn waterfall. In many cases, no matter if it's inside the organization or at the edge between your organization and the customers, you will meet people that work in that traditional approach. Let's name it, label it with, with waterfall. If you want to be effective working with them, understand what's that. My very early findings were that many companies that didn't want to, because they said it's, it's wrong, they didn't do waterfall right either. There are some steps, there are some processes how to do the waterfall. They didn't do it correctly. So there's a very a lot of systemic problems over there. I don't want to say know your enemy because that's <laughs> not the kind of conversation. But if you want to be effective, you need to understand the organization you're working and you're working with. Love it. Now I appreciate that. One last question for you. Mm -hmm. Let's get on with your what should be the start of your evening, I think. What is the one book that every scrum master should read? People were. People were. People were by Tom DeMarco. Um, it's a book for, yeah. it's like software, hardware, it's people were, because it's a book from 1980s or so. So I believe some concepts uh, that are written there uh, are perhaps from late 1970s. You read it, there's no single word about Scrum or Agile, but a lot about self management, self organization how to motivate people, how bad it is to put people in tiny boxes in open space. Everything that we rediscovered later, I think coming back to classics, it's very essential. Uh, I would start with that. Great. Oh, I, People Wear is a great recommendation. Classic book. Uh, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. It was, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, Pavel, it's great to to finally meet you. And I appreciate you doing this. And I hope we have many more chances to talk in the future. Me too. Thank you. All right. Take care.